Hey what's up guys, welcome to Gabriel Gaprod. Today we are going to see the steps I took to achieve something like this, where we have a tornado going crazy and pulling objects inside. We will see how the tornado shader was made, as well as the clouds in the sky, and we will have a look at how the movement and the pulling forces of the tornado were done. This project is available on my Patreon page, links in the description in case you are interested. So, with that being said, let's see how we can do this. So, to create the tornado effect, I knew I needed a 3D mesh, so I went to Blender and I started with a sign ladder of 32 vertices. I immediately created the UV maps to facilitate that process and make sure the cylinder covers the whole UV area like this. Once I have done that, I started modeling the tornado mesh into something similar to a funeral. However, this one is larger at the top and in the middle it starts to shrink into a curvy tunnel and at the bottom it's also going to be larger but not as much as in the top. Once I was pleased with the result, I export as an FBX to Unity. I created an unlit graph for the tornado shader, and this shader will be divided in two main parts. The wiggle movement of the mesh, basically done with vertex animation, and the dissolving and scrolling part. So I decided to start with the dissolving part, which required me to use a time note that it's going to make a simple noise node scroll at a certain speed. The only difference between a normal scroll and the one that I wanted to make is that I used a radial shear which basically applies a circular warp to the noise and this kind of distortion adds a nice touch to the tornado. For the dissolving part all I needed to do is connect this noise to the alpha clip threshold and then created the vector 1 as a slider between 0 and 1 that will be connected to the alpha and control the amount of dissolve. I also added color by simply multiplying the simple noise with the color and connect it to the color input of the unlit master. To see how this was working, I created a material out of the shader, created an empty with the particle system attached, which only emits one particle. And then I assigned the tornado mesh and the material too. And as soon as I start playing with the dissolve amount, the noise scale and the speed and with the color, I saw that everything was working well, so I decided to move on to the next step, which was adding another noise texture since this one was being too predictable and kinda static. To achieve that, I used the same method and the same noise, but this time with a twirl node. I added properties to control the twirl center, the twirl strength, and the speed as well. And then I mixed both of the noises and replaced the respective connections. This time, as soon as I started dissolving it, it was looking much better and more unpredictable. And with a certain amount of twirl, I got a result that was very satisfying and I was able to control the center of the twirl as well. I decided to move on to the next step, which was the vertex animation. And I previously made this video about vertex animation and went into a lot of detail on how it works. So if you are interested, the link's in the description. Now once I had the vertex animation working, and my tornado was wobbling around, I noticed that I needed a few more vertices, more loops in my geometry. So I went back to Blender and added a few more. And now it looks much smoother and I was able to move on to the next part. And the next part is enhancing the aesthetics of the tornado by adding more layers. So for the core, I stretched it a little bit in the z-axis, making it taller. Then I proceeded to add a layer of grey wind, which is bigger than the car, and it's more dissolved, and with more twirl as well. One of the last layers I added was mostly to create contrast with the tornado, and it was what I call it dark dust. And I only wanted to add a touch of this, that's why it's very dissolved. I then added a big layer of grey clouds at the top, and also added a few more at the bottom as well. 
and once I was pleased with the result, I started working in the movement of the tornado. And for that, I knew I wanted it to move slowly and randomly inside a given radius. So I created a script where I have public movement radius, the movement speed and the movement is type, so I can control with the curve how the motion of the tornado is going to be. I keep the original position of the tornado to determine the radius, then I start a coroutine where I choose a random position inside that radius, measure the distance between the tornado and the new position, and calculate how long it will take for the tornado to arrive at that new position. Once I had that information, I used iTwin, which is extremely useful, and I used it to move the tornado to that new position according to the east type curve and pass the time it will take to travel that distance. The coroutine waits until it arrives at the destination and then calls itself again and again to repeat the whole process and choose a new destination. So I added the script to the tornado, adjusted the values and everything was working well. It was moving slowly and to random positions. Now, since this is a tornado, I really wanted to recreate the physical impact it has in reality, which essentially is pulling objects inside, making them spin, and it also drops them from time to time. So in order to achieve a similar effect, I needed to add a sphere collider as a trigger, to control the pull radius, and to know if objects are in a range to be pulled. To know if the objects are in the range, I use the on trigger enter and search for the tag of the object, which in this case was bullet just for testing purpose. And then I call it the increase pull coroutine. And this function will control the pull force according to a curve, since the forces of the tornado also varies a lot and has irregularities. Then I get the distance between the tornado and the object so I can know in which direction I need to pull the object. I access the rigid body of the object and I use the add force to pull the objects towards the pulling center. And the pulling center is nothing more than an empty game object that will be moving up and down thanks to this animation curve. Just like this. And the objects will be pulled towards this empty. So, now it was time to test this out, so I added a few cubes to my scene. I also created this curve for the pulling force of the tornado, where 1 will be the maximum that I set in the pull force, so 0 is no force, and minus 1 pushes away the cubes. And when I pressed play, the result was pretty interesting. With a few more tweaks, I also added the clouds, which are basically made from the same shader as the tornado, but moving slower. And then I replaced the cubes with exploding barrels, and the result is amazing. I had a blast playing with this tornado, and it's really cool the end result, I think. So that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed and learned something new as well. And this project is available on my Patreon page, in case you are interested in supporting me. All the links are in the description, by the way. And I just want to say a special thanks to my super mega patrons, which are Alex Dixon, Christian Mercino, Facundo Perez Botti, Goblin Plague, James Finlay, Jens Anderson, Juan Mendiola, Luis Enrique Moreira de Souza, Tirita, Warden Studios, Yannick Saylor, X Game Dev and Ioni. You guys are amazing and I couldn't be more thankful of your support. I hope you have all enjoyed this tutorial and I really hope to see you in the next one.